this is so wrong. It's not really what I had in mind, but... You gotta make do with what you got, you know? It's, it's nice. I don't know, I feel like I could throw on like a Cinderella soundtrack right now and fit perfectly with this. <laughs> we did do the center console sub box fastening. What, what is so freaking fun? <laughs> you know. You don't know? Sure, now. I'm start this, this is funny. <laughs> Don't worry, it was recording the whole time. <laughs> and we're rolling. Okay, so if you saw yesterday's video, we got the center console sub box and rosine fastened down, locked in place where it, you know this is going to be staying, and it is it is bolted down. So that's sick. Uh, we did get a wash on it yesterday, and we pulled it out. However, look at the fluid back there. Look at the, look at the fluid back there. Freaking rear brake line popped on the truck, busted a hole in the freaking brake line, the fluid just went everywhere. So, that's awesome. So now we have to fix that. I'm not positive we're going to get the brake line fixed today or not, but I'm going to attempt to at least get it pulled off, maybe take it in down, try to find a replacement line for it. Again, I've never replaced a brake line, however, so I don't know. I don't know what all that entails, and I don't know if we're going to get it bent today or not. But we're going to at least attempt to get it pulled off so we can see the damage and go from there. And then if you, kind of, if you want to come look at the roll pan back here, you see how this edge back here is like a flush fitment and it looks like it's supposed to. This side, however, is not. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to pop this into place and then do on the back side, there's a lip like this. If you show on this edge, this like metal lip that comes around the roll pan, there's an identical looking tab on the rear of the bed fender on the inside. We're actually gonna drill one hole on each side and do a little tiny self tapper, a metal screw just to tie that roll pan to the lip on, on both sides on the back end there. Cause it was never fastened in place. And the options are either you do a little tiny weld on the back side there underneath, or you gotta do like a little self tap or something like that. So we're gonna do that. That way this roll pan going down the road, it doesn't pop out like that. Cause again, one of the small things is never buttoned up. So it needs to get done. This is that little part I was telling you about in the previous video where, I don't know why, like the brake lines are the, like the rustiest thing on this truck. And it's only in this like one location because like for the most part, everything else is so nice, but anyways, you can see the brake line right there. You can see where the breakage happened down through yonder. If I can get it to focus. So that's where that brake line blew apart and there's a there's a pin hole in it. And uh, so it's gotta get removed. So we're gonna try our best. We're gonna try to get some PB Blast or WD-40 on there try to get that fitting off, it might be a pain. Try to pull that line off. I'm gonna go see where the line ends down on the other end of where it's coming from. Exhaust is hanging up again. There we go, that's nice. I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to do. Sweet. Now it started spinning pretty easy. Hopefully that's a good sign. I don't know how much fluid's left in this because like I was telling him, I checked the brake fluid, um, whatever. I took the cap off to check the brake fluid level and I saw there was a big puddle under the rear end and it was all gone, which is why we didn't take it down the road yesterday. So I don't know how much pressure's in these or not, especially with the air, air leak in this line. I wouldn't think very much or any. So there's that one. I gotta pull this little metal tab off here. And then we're going to get to the other end and pull the other one off. And hopefully we can find a way to finagle this line out so we can take the whole thing into the shop and get one matched up. And we're going to try to get a copper line um, to replace it with just because I think they're a little bit easier to work with from what I can remember with my father-in-law's 1500 when he had a brake line blow on his second gen not four months ago maybe. Same thing happened to him. Can we just admire like the fact that we have a working Dude, ratchet set now? There was this guy that got this set for me. I can't remember his name. You know, it might have been your employee. It might have been. He was behind the camera right now, you know? Yeah, you know what? Finally, he did something useful right here. <laughs> Got me a new set of tools. <laughs> Thank you, Ty. You're How welcome. How only do you film 
great content with TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube Shorts, but you did buy me a useful tool because I couldn't find half of mine. Anyways. It was getting a little bit ridiculous <laughs> to the point where I'm like, you know what? It's worth me putting a little bit of my money into it just so we can just speed so up the process. Just so he doesn't ask me to go look for the freaking socket. <laughs> exactly. You're like, yeah, can you go find the socket? Yeah, here's a whole freaking new container. <laughs> Easy peasy. So that's ready. So now we can just work our way down, pop it out of the you know, little tabs that hold it in, and then pull the line off at the end. The Give good, me the good news. The good news is the threads are rotating out, which is good. Bad news is the fitting is so rusted around it that it's wanting to rotate the entire brake line, um, which, is, which is fine, because uh, technically we could just cut the brake line right here since we're, we don't need it anyway, and then just twist the fitting out so that we don't damage the threads. Which is actually probably what I'm going to do. Let's do it. Cool. For those of you that didn't know, most fluids that come out of your truck are slippery. I was trying to find an even shorter wrench, and unfortunately I couldn't find a smaller one, so I grabbed the I grabbed the three-inch wrench because you know, I thought, you know, I would really like to use the shortest one I have. Okay. There we be. Got Look it. at that. Yeah, we did get Sweet. it. Sweet. Look at that. And we almost took out the eye. Yep, almost that's what's left, left of it. Flathead. You yeah. know, that's what happens when you use flathead screwdrivers as a crowbar. Yeah, you use what you got. Well, I'm trying not to really get your face in it. <laughs> Thanks, Cy. <laughs> Thanks for pointing out the part of me that you want to make sure you keep out of the video. <laughs> As long as we keep your face out of it, people should keep watching. Thanks, jerk. <laughs> Look at this guy. Had a, had a creeper all along and he never even wanted to use it. Well, this is so much more efficient to get around. Are you supposed to use the tools you have? You know what's funny is I've had that thing for like a few years now and I always like would grab an old bow target and sit on it and never use that. I don't even know why. It's been in the bar the whole time. I think I've just kind of liked enjoying things to be more difficult than anything. That out and just hang it back up here for now. Hang that there. You want to remember to put these little tabs and hangers back up for these fuel lines and brake line because otherwise they'll freaking rattle all over the place and rub a hole in your brake line all over again or your fuel line or whatever. Now, as far as we know, the brake line should be completely loose and ready to pull on out of here. We'll find out. Alright, you just tell me when to pull. Give it a little pull. Okay, give it a little pull. Alright. It's coming all the way. Yep. Well, there's the brake line that goes from the driver's side, little bracket thingy on the thingy by the frame, and all the way back to the little thingy by the rear axle. <laughs> Lots of little thingies. That was fun. It wasn't that bad, though. I thought it was going to be worse. Now, we haven't installed the new one yet. So <laughs> we don't want to speak too soon. Hopefully, though, a brand new piece of copper brake line won't be so bad. But we will find out soon enough. Well, the roll pan is now fastened in place. Thanks for getting dust on it, Ty. Uh, roll pan's in place with the sheet metal screws on the back side. Like I said, the, pan, the roll pan has like a little one inch tab and so does the bed from factory that like folds over. And so all I did was I drilled a little hole in between the two to connect them and put a little metal sheet metal screw. Same on both sides. So it's now flush on both ends and uh, now it's not gonna pop back out. And we gotta run into town and grab a brake line for this truck. We're gonna be running into town, hopefully finding that brake line, grabbing some lunch, going to the Fin Feather Fur. You know, it's not if, you know, if you're local ish, you guys will know what I'm talking about. But uh, the Fin's kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like It's actually right? like the only thing to do around here. <laughs> <It really is. laughs> Think about it, that's probably why people like it so much. Uh, not much variety. But, uh, yeah. anyways, on to the next thing. Here's what we got we got some new lines. 
We got the stuff that's, uh, they said this was a better stuff. Copper nickel, supposed to be a lot easier to bend around if you need to. Uh, we got some DOT-3. We got some little fittings. The lines. And uh, we're gonna kinda, we're gonna make our own thing here. So, as far as I understand, he said you kinda fish this to where you need it. Um, you know, once you got it where you need it, slide your nuts on, make the flange, cut it, do the same thing on the other side. Slide the nut on first, make the flange then. And I actually got the tool to actually do that here. And it's supposed to be a pretty, supposed to be, be, a, be a pretty simple process. So, let's try to get this done. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here of trying to get stuff done. So, we got Rosine here. And uh, now that we got the unexpected fix part of the project out of the way, let me show you how we let me show you how we did here. So I kind of showed you a little clip there when I was zipping in the little brackets that kind of space out the fuel lines and brake lines so they don't like touch each other. Um, I got those all clipped back in, fastened in place. The line came out crispy clean, front to back, where it's supposed to be routed up. And then I'll show you the last little bit here. And let me know down in the comments, is a generator like, is that really obnoxious or do you guys not really pay attention to that much? This is gonna be the first video with that in it, so I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with a remedy if it's a problem. So here's where the brake line comes out, up over the frame. If you look down in here, it's not touching the frame. It's free floating just over top. I got the bracket back in. Again, just just hardly off the frame, so it's not touching. And uh, then goes back in there. Again, we went the copper line and we, we should be good. We should be, we should be solid. And hopefully that is the end. We did actually leave the cap off of the fluid reservoir that we took the cap off we pumped the brakes a bunch and a lot of that fluid got absorbed back down into the brake lines i've never done brake lines like i've never bled brake lines like cracking them off you know down by the actual brakes and like bleeding into dc fluid and tightening back on i've never done that before um so maybe that's bad but i haven't had to do it very many times ever either so i've always just kind of like left the cap off the reservoir pumped it until you stop seeing any kind of air bubbles come up out and then top the fluid off to where it's supposed to be cap on that's what i did here too i don't know if that's wrong let me know down in the comments i'm sure there's different ways to do it but that's what we did and brakes feel firm and uh, we haven't taken it down the road yet it's disgustingly muddy the whole yard is underwater literally it's underwater you guys saw the intro it's bad uh yeah. so we're not taking it out today but we did get the rear brake line we did get the brake what said. We did get the brake line replaced from front to back. So it's one solid line, copper. It's pretty, it's pretty legit. The guy at AutoZone is kind of an idiot though. So <laughs> you get, you're just kind of a moron. I mean, these, some of these people, I just don't understand it. Like, I'm like, dude, like I bring it, like I try to make it so simple. Like you can't mess this up. I bring him the brake line with the fittings, everything. I said, okay, here's the line I need. It's between 145, 155 inches long. I don't care if I have to like resize the line and cut it down and, you know, give me my own, whatever you call these things. You know what I'm trying to say for the, to go into the end of the brake line. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna match it up. Er, matches it up, gives me that. This thing is like, you matched it up, right? Like you took, he like took the line back somewhere to check the thread pitch. Maybe he did and he just still gave me the wrong stuff. And then he comes back and he's like, is that two wheel, four wheel drive? And I'm like, what difference does it make? You've got the line, <laughs> just check the thread pitch and give me a line with one of these on the end that's a proper thread pitch. Oh, okay. Gives me the wrong one <laughs> after checking it. <laughs> and I told him it was for a four wheel drive. It's, that made a difference for the thread pitch of this. Um, anyways. I'm sorry, if you work at AutoZone, it is, you know, there's guys that work that actually know what they're doing. Back when I lived in Fort Wayne, there was a guy, one in AutoZone, he watched the videos, actually both the employees at the desk, they watched the videos and all this stuff. And like, if I asked him any question, he didn't ask me any stupid question. If you asked me two wheel drive, four wheel drive, he didn't ask me, is it, you know, anything. It was just kind of like, what truck is it? Yeah, it's an 01 24 valve. Cool. 
and the dude always got my parts correct every single time. Never had a, but he also drove at Cummins and he managed the place and he worked there for like 10 years and just had his own projects and he actually worked on his own stuff and he just, just knew his stuff. I mean, it's just, so I know there's different types of people. Like that guy was like legit. Like he worked at AutoZone and really he could have been working somewhere completely different and making way more money probably because he actually freaking knew his crap and he was super sharp. But like some of these people, man, it's like you don't want to work in the automotive field. Like you just ask them the notes questions. And I know that they're supposed to because the system asks them the questions to fill in. But sometimes it's just like, just think it through a little bit. Like what does the thread pitch of this have to do with being a two wheel or four wheel drive? It doesn't have anything to do with it. Take the one that I'm giving you. This is what came off the truck. Match it up. Well, he said it was matched up. He said it was. He said he checked it. So right I checked one. it. I double checked it. Didn't work. Not even close. Completely wrong. Not even like not even a little bit right. So, but we got it done. Yeah, so. he was a nice guy, but he didn't know what he was doing. So, whatever. It's not the first time he's done that too. I've, I've actually like gone to that exact store, and I'm like, please don't be the one. Like, oh, I can get you over here. I'm like, yeah, I'd rather you not. It's bad, but it's true. Like, there's just certain people you just know that they get stuff wrong. And you're like, you have to help walk them through his own computer system. And it's just so dumb. I don't get it, but whatever. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was fun. We got a brake line replaced. Fastened the roll pan into position. Didn't get the toolbox done. Because I had to have him, like, every time he went over there, I had him come back over here to hold light for me. I need to get my magnetic light back. I don't know where the stupid thing went. Well, what? We've moved like three times in the last five years, and every time we move, I lose half my tools, and I have to rebuy them. So, if anybody knows where they went, let me know. <laughs> so I don't have to keep on <laughs> over and over the same stupid tools. But, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you guys want to get entered to win a beautiful first gen, comes it comes with five thousand dollars in cash. Twenty times entries are live right now. Every one dollar is twenty entries to win. If you check the description below, I'll even leave you a bonus code that's a very limited quantity. So use it while you can. Anyways, guys, best of luck to you, and I'll catch you in the next video.